So, check this out, people. Last month, on December 14th, two black women were arrested in Bali, Indonesia for being rude, disrespectful to the natives. They went to a salon and got some services done. And then after they got the service, typical American and UK people thinking that they're entitled and privileged, they refused to pay. They refused to pay the full amount. I guess they felt like the service wasn't worth the $16. Something that in the U.S. would have probably cost them five or six times as much. But this is a typical type of behavior coming from people who are from the West. They feel like they're entitled and if they don't like something after they've received the services, then they're just not going to pay because they're entitled to do that. At least that's what they think. At least that's what they thought. You see, people, I live in the Philippines. I've lived here now for about six months. I've been here in the past, but I've returned a few times because the people are kind, they're polite, they're very respectful, and rarely, rarely, if at all, do you see people arguing or fighting, which does happen. It happens everywhere. But for those people who are American, European, from a white country, or any other country, doesn't matter if it's white, black, or whatever, Asian. You can't come to Southeast Asia, you can't come to Asia thinking that you're entitled, thinking that you're going to disrespect these people, that you're going to talk down to them, let alone put your hands on them. Because if I put my hands on a Filipino for any reason, I'm going to go to prison. I'm going to go to prison for a very long time. And then after I've done my time, I'm going to be put on a plane and escorted right back to the U.S. Never to be allowed to return to Southeast Asia or any place in Asia for that matter. And so you have these two black women who got serviced at a salon in Indonesia and then disrespected the natives. The worst thing you can do is come to Asia and then put your hands on a native. That is the worst thing you could do. The very worst thing anybody can do, because this is not the West. And they don't take kindly to foreigners who come here thinking that they can behave the way they behave in their house, in their home, in the West. That doesn't fly here. In Southeast Asia, you're not allowed to own land. You can't own land. You can own property. You just can't own land. You can't even work here unless you're expacted through a company and commission from an outside source to work. And you're being paid by that outside source. You can't even come to the Philippines as a foreigner and get a job because the jobs are held for the natives, for the people who are nationals, who are Filipino, who are Asian. And so if you think that you're gonna to come to the Philippines where I live, for example, and try to work, that's not gonna happen because the jobs are held for the natives. If you think you're gonna come here and not pay for a service that you received, that only happens in your country, not here, because you will go to prison. If you think you're going to hurt someone, I don't care for what reason you think, if you put your hands on a native, you will do hard time. 
And unfortunately, these two women who just happen to be black on top of that, which, make, which makes it even worse. You know why it's worse that they were black or that they are black? Is that black people already have a bad reputation. They don't have a bad reputation because they're black. They have a bad reputation because in America, for example, the blacks are 13%. There are 13% black people in the U.S. compared to the 86, 87, 88% of whites, right? 13% of Americans are black. And 13% out of those 13%, more than half of them commit all of the crimes, or most, not all of the crimes, most of the crimes in the U.S. Now... People want to call it racism when the prisons are filled with mostly black people. They want to call it racism when people don't want to service black people. People want to call it racism when nobody wants to deal with black people. It's not racism. It's you don't know how to actism. See, that's the problem. When the majority of a people are constantly misbehaving, are constantly disrespecting people, are constantly being aggressive and violent. People don't want to deal with you. That's the elephant in the room. See, nobody wants to say the truth. They want to call everything that happens against a black person racist, when the fact is you don't know how to actism is what it is. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has to do with your attitude, with your disrespect, with your entitlement, with you feeling like you're entitled to what no one else is because some 400 years ago, your ancestors was, were slaves. Nobody gives a fuck. It mattered when it mattered. And those who were slaves are no longer slaves. And those who were slaves are no longer here. And here you have a majority of people who are brainwashed, believing that they're entitled to something because their ancestors who worked hard, who built and who broke their backs in, in, on farms, doing hard labor that no one wants to do, laid down the foundation for their freedom today. They want to act like they did it. They want to act like it was them who did the hard work and they want to benefit off the backs of their ancestors. When their ancestors during that time didn't complain, they didn't bitch, they didn't disrespect. And the worst thing about it is that black Americans kill more black Americans than anyone else in the country. Their ancestors didn't kill each other. They owned businesses back in the 1940s and the 1950s. There were black-owned restaurants, black-owned casinos. There were black-owned hotels, speakeasies, juke joints. And for those who don't know what speakeasies are and juke joints, those are these small bars where they play music and had live entertainment. So you had all of these black people who had class, who knew how to dress, right? Who knew how to walk. The women were women. They had their afros. They had their afro puffs. They had their braids. They were proud of who they were, proud of their hair, proud of their color, proud of their culture. You had actors, great actors like Morgan Freeman, right? You had great Artists who sang R&B like Marvin Gaye, The Four Tops, The Commodores, Lionel Richie. You had Sammy Davis Jr. who performed live and he performed with white people. And yet you have these people today, these black people today talking about how racist America is or how racist America was. When you go back in time, you see that there were more black TV shows like Sanford and Son, like 
this show with um, George Jefferson. I forgot the name of that show. And you had all of these sitcoms that included Puerto Ricans, that included blacks, Asians, minorities. And yet today, there aren't any black sitcoms on television. There aren't any more great black actors because everything has to be inclusive. So they have to hire black actors who can act just because they're black instead of hiring them for their talent, right? You had all of these performers, Patti LaBelle. You had Gladys Knight and the Pips. You had all of these greats, Rick James, Richard Pryor, all of these great people who were on television never complaining about America being racist. How funny it is that in those times, you had all of these black performers, black owned businesses, black athletes, black coaches, black mayors, black governors, and yet America was racist according to modern blacks today. This weak, gay, soft generation, because this is the gayest generation in history. People don't want to hear what I'm saying, I don't really care. You want to call me misogynist, racist, homophobic, and all that bullshit. People who have no education use those words because that's their easy way out. That is the way for them to escape reality. Instead of accepting the fact that nobody likes these woke gays because they want to push their agenda on children. They want to sexualize children. And then you have blacks who complain about racism because they feel entitled and don't know how to act. Am I lying? So you have these two black women, both from the West, one from the US, the other from the UK, coming to Southeast Asia, being disrespectful, and then grabbing one of the natives. Because they're so entitled that they have the right to disrespect who they want because they come from the West, where black people steal, the majority of them, you don't have to like what I'm saying or the way I'm saying it. If you don't like what I'm putting down, don't pick it up. This is the problem. Instead of you teaching your children to be honorable, to be respectful, you teach your children that there's racism when there is no racism. You teach your children that you're oppressed when you're not oppressed watching your 50-inch television, driving your fancy car, going to work, making more money than most white people. Because I'm Puerto Rican, and I made more money than most white people that I know. And I, walked and I worked along Jewish and white people. And they took me under their wings, they trained me, they taught me, they gave me the support that no one else gave me, not a Puerto Rican and not a black. And that's how the majority of white people are. But yet, this new generation who are soft, who have no heart, no motivation, no strength, all they do is complain, all they do is bitch and moan. Instead of getting off of their lazy ass and getting a job and applying for a job, they say that they can't because the white man has them down. The white man never kept me down. And I'm from the Bronx. I grew up on 139th Street between Brook and Willis Avenue. And on 140th Street were the blacks. On 138th Street were the gangs. And we lived between the blacks and the gangs. One thing Puerto Ricans and blacks always understood, we don't war with each other. Because two tigers who fight together know this. They always try to avoid a fight because one of them is going to be killed and the other one is going to be gravely injured. So there's an unspoken rule between blacks and Puerto Ricans. We do not disrespect each other because none of us are going to take it. So we can walk alongside each other 
and respect each other without there being an issue. Because a Puerto Rican knows that if he hits a black man, he might get jumped by a bunch of black people. And a black man knows that if he hits a Puerto Rican, he's going to get jumped by a bunch of Puerto Ricans. And the problem with a lot of minorities is that we are abusive. We are abusive towards white people because white people tend to be meek. White people tend to be meek. And so it's easier for us to abuse those who are weaker than us. And then say later on that it's because they're racist. I want to ask any American black person out there, when has anyone been racist against you? Because I'm 56 years old and I've never experienced racism. I've had people call me a nigger before. A white person called me a nigger. And I cursed the shit out of them. That doesn't mean that America's racist. That means they're racist. Or it could just mean that they were in a bad mood and wanted to disrespect me. I could care less what one person thinks about me. I could care less what one person thinks about me. That doesn't make the country racist. I've worked in better jobs than most white people. I've owned cars that are better than most white people. I've made more money than most white people. How is America racist when Asians go to America and they thrive? South Americans, Mexicans go to America and they thrive. Indians go to America and they own every 7-Eleven, every convenience store there is, but black people don't own one fucking grocery store. Is it because America is racist or is it because you feel entitled and then you want to call it racism? Why don't you call it you don't know how to actism? And I'm not talking about all blacks because I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for the things I'm saying. I'm going to get a lot of heat from those ignorant, woke idiots who don't have an education and you don't have to go to school to have an education. You just got to have a certain level of class. Because I've worked with a lot of black people who made as much money as me and even more money than me and more money than most white people. I have friends back home in the U.S who drive better cars than most white people, who own fancier homes than white people. So I'm trying to understand this whole nonsense of racism that's being sold back home in the US. Because that's why I left. Because America is going to hell on a boat. And so getting back to these two entitled black women who are so fucking ghetto that they think that they can come here to Southeast Asia or any place in Asia and act the way they do back home in the West. And one of them put their hands on one of the salon workers and felt like they had every right to argue, to disagree, to fight back, and to not wanna pay, claiming that they're about to pay. When you're about to pay, you put your hands in your pocket. You don't put your hands on somebody. And so these Asians, locked the door and refused to let them out until they paid. And of course, one of these women were saying, if you let me out, I will go to my car and get the money. The fact is that then in Indonesia, I honestly doubt that they drove there. They most likely took a cab, a pedicab, or some other form of transportation because most people who come to this country or to Southeast Asia on vacation don't drive because it's almost impossible to drive. And if you're not familiar with the streets, trust me, you will get killed here. Driving, that is. And so she said, I'm going to my car to get the money and they refused to let her out until she paid. And so she put her hands on one of the natives. And now, today, they're locked up. They were paraded in orange jumpsuits through the streets of Indonesia and shamed for their actions. You see, this is not America, people. This is not Europe. You can act black and ghetto and have no class in your country, but you can't come here and do that. If you want to come to the Philippines, people, if you want to come to Southeast Asia or any place in Asia, act right. Act like you have some level of class. Leave your nonsense your bullshit, your entitlement, 
back home at the airport before you get on the plane to Asia. Because if not, you're going to find yourself like these two idiots who got no class and want to act like they're entitled because they're black and because they've been, they've been held down for too long. They've been put down by the white man and they're entitled to whatever they want. They're entitled to steal, which, are, which is what's happening back home in the U.S. The majority of thefts. This is why Walmart is leaving Chicago, New York. This is why Walgreens is shutting down most of their stores in, in major cities. It's not the white man breaking into these stores and stealing at will. It's the black people. And you don't have to like that I'm saying it. Just watch the TV. Just watch the news. And the very same black people who do it, who support it, who allow it, who have children who are doing it, who have parents who are doing it, who have aunts and cousins who are doing it, want to pretend that if anybody speaks the truth against the nonsense they're doing, that they're racist. It's, you don't know how to act as them. And if you continue to act this way, you, you, not the white man, will continue to drive your people down. Because blacks aren't, killed, aren't being killed by white people. Blacks are being killed by blacks. And Black Lives Matter don't go into black neighborhoods. Every time a black man is killed by another black man, protesting and saying that black lives matter and why are blacks killing blacks, we need to change this. No. Black lives matter when a cop kills a black life. Because that gives them the... It promotes their cause, their political cause, which has nothing to do with black lives. It just has to do with money. And this is why I moved and stepped out of that ridiculous movement because if black lives really matter, then black lives would be supporting black lives. And you don't have to like what I'm saying, and if you don't like what I'm saying, don't pick up what I'm putting down. Because my people are no different. My people are no different. I don't want to live in an all Puerto Rican neighborhood. Because when you put five Puerto Ricans in a group, there's always one fucking idiot that fucks it up for everybody. I'd rather live in a mixed neighborhood where everybody respects each other or an all-white neighborhood where nobody fucks with me. Where when you walk down the street, they say, hey, how you doing today? Hey, good morning. Hey, good evening. Hey, good afternoon. You want a drink? Because that's what white people do, the majority of them. And just like they are ignorant black people, they are ignorant white people. The problem is that the majority of blacks are ignorant. You don't have to like it. You don't like it. Go ahead, comment like you ignorant people do because you got nothing better to do. Instead of saying, you know what, you're right. We need to grab ourselves by the boss, the men, and we need to teach our children to respect their elders. Because there was a time when I was growing up when kids, black, white, Puerto Rican, it didn't matter the race, when a woman walked down the street with bags, heavy bags, all of the kids ran up to her and took the bags from her hand and carried those bags for her to the building, walked her upstairs and handed her her groceries. Every kid. If a car broke down in the middle of the road, everybody got behind that car and pushed. Everybody. And I grew up in the late 70s and 80s during the, the crack era and cocaine and drug era. So, now you have this generation of little pussies who don't work because they don't make enough money. If you get up your ass and you work, you make enough money. You're entitled. You don't want to, do, you don't want to be a plumber you don't want, because you're ashamed. You don't want to be a janitor because you're ashamed. You don't want to be a mechanic. You just want to sit at home and, and, and press buttons. You want to be on your phone and touch an app and make money. That's why you ain't, you ain't getting nowhere. Because you don't want to do the work. You don't want to get your hands dirty. And so again, these two black 
ghetto ass women with no class came to Southeast Asia, they went to Indonesia, they put their hands on these people who are, the majority of these people, 90% of Asians are hospitable. This is why I moved here. Because people know how to act. These people are kind, they're always waving, they're always smiling, they're always greeting you, they are always asking you if you want to drink, if you want to eat. I'm constantly saying hello, I can't even turn my video camera on outside and record myself making a video because most of the time I'm being interrupted by people waving hi, saying hello, how you doing, what you doing, what country are you from. Don't come here with that bullshit, people. Don't come to the Philippines acting up, acting all ghetto, acting like you're entitled. This ain't America. These people got class. I'll give you a perfect example, my own experience. I live in a building, it's a three-story building. Most of the people who are living here have been here for many years. And so there's a door down in the front that's locked. You need a key to get in. And every floor has a gate. And so you need two keys, one to get in from the main entrance downstairs and another key to get through the gate once you reach your floor. And when I first moved here, I didn't have a key. No one had a key. So you had to depend on others to open the door for you now. I don't know anyone here in this building, at least at the time, I didn't. And so each time I would get locked out, and because I don't speak the language, and I don't have the common sense because I'm American, right, and we have no class, I would shake the gate and rattle the gate to try to get someone's attention so that they come, can come out and open the gate for me so that I can get in because I, like most Americans, feel entitled, right? And each time I would go down to, to, for example, to get me something to eat and come back up, I would leave the gate open so that when I came back up, I could get in. But someone would always close the gate. And so I would get angry and I would rattle the gate. And it didn't matter the time, 10 in the morning or 2 in the morning, I would rattle the gate so that someone could come outside and open the door for me because I'm entitled. I don't have no class. I, can, I cannot say, hello, hello, excuse me, can someone open the door for me? Whistle or something in a polite manner. I'm an American and I'm entitled, right? So someone had to shake my gate. Someone had to shake my gate and knock some sense into me. One afternoon, I went down to get something to eat left the gate open, and when I came back up, the gate was closed. And so I rattled the gate. And a man, a Filipino, this gentleman looked out the window. I could see his eyes, he wasn't happy. And he came out and he opened the gate for me. And I said to him, I live here. I wasn't happy because I'm getting tired of having to rattle the gate each time I go outside and I can't get in. Why are people constantly closing the gate when I can't get in? Because I'm an American, I'm entitled. Now, when I said to him, I live here, and I started to walk away, he walked up to me and said to me just like this. Why don't you get a key? And I said to him, I don't have a key, no one has the key. The caretaker doesn't have a key. And he says to me, why don't you call someone? We are not like you here. We are quiet people. We've been here for many years. We don't disrespect nobody. We are not like you people, he said. He said other things. He never cursed. He did raise his voice because he had every right to. He was angry. He was tired of me coming here acting like I had every right to act the way I was acting when they don't even behave that way. He says to me, why don't you call someone? Why don't you call for someone next time? Next time, call for someone, he said, with his finger up in my face. Now, I know better. 
I know better than to disrespect a native. I know better than to argue with one. I know better than to draw that attention to myself. I know even better that if he would have put his hands on me, I would have to take the ass whooping. I would have taken it. You know why? Because I don't want to leave this country. I don't want to be kicked out of this country. Because this is one of the best countries I've ever lived in. The people know how to act. The people know how to behave. The women have class. The women are feminine. The people are kind. I don't want to be kicked out. So if he would have put his hands on me, I'm a fighter. I've been fighting for years. I have scars on my face. My eyebrows don't grow properly. My nose is crooked. My chest plate was broken from a punch to the chest. I broke my, my left foot in a competition, my last competition where I fought. I'm a fighter. I was fighting in the streets before I was fighting in the ring. So I can handle myself. But if this man would have put his hands on me, I'd have taken the ass whooping because I don't want to be kicked out of this country. And so when he said to me, we are not like you people. We know how to act. We know how to behave. Next time, call someone. I said to him, just like this. Yes, Kuja. I understand, Kuja. Kuja means brother. It means big brother. I said, I understand. And he said to me, you understand? He repeated what I said. You, do you understand? I said, yes. I understand. And then I walked away. And the very first thing I did was go downstairs, buy a beer. I don't drink. I bought a beer, came right back up, knocked on the door. His wife opened the door and I said, ma'am, I just want to apologize to you and, the, and your husband for being disrespectful and making all the noise that I made. I want to apologize to your husband. And she said, he's not here right now. He's across the street. So I said, I'll come back later. When my girlfriend came home, I explained to her what I did, what an idiot I was, and how sorry I felt for the way I behaved. Because it took another man to tell me like it is and put me in my place. And it takes a real man to understand that and to humble himself and apologize. And so I said, can we go to the bakery and buy a cake so that we can give it to his wife and I can give this beer to her husband and apologize. And we went to the store, we bought a cake at the bakery, we came back, I knocked on the door, the wife came out, opened the door, and then the husband came out, shirtless, he was putting on his pants, I could see him walking towards the door, and he was so apologetic. He was like, I'm sorry, I apologize, I lost my temper. Like I said, these people are very kind, very polite, very humble. He said, I apologize, I lost my temper. I put my hand out to his and I shook his hand. I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, no, Kuya. I apologize. You are right. You are 100% correct. I should have called someone. I was loud, I was rude, and I was disrespectful. Thank you for talking to me the way you did. Because if you, haven't, if you hadn't spoken to me that way, I would have continued to behave that way, and I would have been the person that everybody hates in this building and that nobody likes, because I don't know how to act. So thank you for putting me in my place. I appreciate you. And I told my girl, babe, please give, give his wife the cake. And then I handed him the beer. That's what a real man does. A real man knows when he's wrong. A real man is not ashamed to say, you're right, I was wrong. Thank you. And so when we don't teach our children to behave, our black children to behave, our Puerto Rican children to behave, and we don't teach them to respect the elders, to respect those who are at a level higher than them, whether socially, spiritually, 
because they're older, because they hold a higher position than they do. If we don't teach our children to behave properly, they're going to grow up to be low lives. And if you're black, and if you're Puerto Rican, if you're Asian, if you're of any race, and you don't know how to act, it's not racism, it's you don't know how to actism. So stop making excuses for being fucking ghetto. Stop making excuses for not having any class. Grab yourself by the boards, be a man, be a father to your children, teach them how to behave, teach them how to have class, so that when they grow up, they can have the same opportunities as the white man, because I've always had those op opportunities. I didn't have a father, and my mother wasn't a mother. I grew up in the streets, but I grew up understanding this, that all my life, those who carried me through, those who taught me, those who took me under their wings, were white. Because of them, I grew up to be the man that I am. A Jewish man named Claude Thompson trained me in Manhattan how to be a graphic artist, to be the best graphic artist that I am. One of the top graphic artists in New York during that time, in the 80s, 90s. And I was making more money than most people who went to college. By the time I was 18, I was making more money than most people who went to college by the time I was 17. And not one time did I have to watch my back from a white man. Everyone who robbed me, who tried to rob me, who I fought, who I had to defend against, was either black or Puerto Rican. Those are facts. 13% of Americans are black, and 50% of the crimes are being committed by the 13%. Because you're killing each other. Black babies are killing black babies. Black women don't know how to act. They hate on other black women. They want to take their man. Black men don't know how to act. They're always bitching and complaining about the white man. Instead of being real men, going out there and doing what a man does, doing what their ancestors did. The great actors of my time when I was growing up, the great performers, the great artists who were singing about love, who were acting, who were performing, like Sammy Davis Jr. Again, who performed against, or who performed alongside white people. The Platters, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Patti LaBelle, all of these greats who don't bitch and complain about racism, but yet today's youth is constantly, constantly bitching and complaining like little pussies. Bro, there's no other way to put it. So these two black women got what they deserve. And now, when they're, after they do their time, which they will do their time, they will be put on a plane, escorted back to their countries in the West, and never be allowed to return back to Southeast Asia or Asia again. Not, they, not that they want to come. Because when you don't know how to act, that's what happens. Now they're humiliated. Now they're embarrassed. Now they feel foolish and stupid because this is what the West needs to do to those people who misbehave instead of giving them an out, an excuse, and a justification for behaving the way we do back home in America. Because America's going to hell on a boat. America's going to hell on a boat. We feel entitled, we think we're better, we think we're more educated. The fact is this, that America is the least educated out of any other country in the world, in the world. Because here in the Philippines, you need two years of college just to work at McDonald's. Two years of college just to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger King, at the mall, a minimum of two years college. I can't get a job here if I wanted to, if I could. No one would hire me with a high school education, let alone a GED. So if you Americans think you got it like that, come to a real country where you actually have to have an education to work. Come to a real country where you actually have to get your hands dirty 
to get a paycheck. Stop bitching and complaining that America is racist. Stop bitching and complaining that America has you down, that America is, is, is the most racist country in the world. You wouldn't survive outside of America. Just ask these two ghetto-ass black women who went to Indonesia, Indonesia acting like they do back home in the West. Just ask them if they can get away with the nonsense that they get away with in their country. Ask them if they can do that anywhere else. Because only in America can a black man slap a white man in the face and get away with it. And yet they're bitching and complaining. Only in America can a black man get a job over a white person and still bitch and complain about it. Only in America do black people complain about being put down, not having anything, not being able to compete while they're watching their 50 inch screen television, driving their fancy car and going home to their three bedroom house or three bedroom apartment. Only in America. So now these two black ghetto ass women are in prison in Indonesia. Trust me people, you don't want to go to prison. You don't want to go to prison in Asia. I've seen what it's like here in the Philippines. Ten people to a cell. Ten. L literally laying on each other. One with his head this way and another with his head that way and both their legs on top of each other's stomach in order to have room to lay down and sleep. You have to shit and piss in front of all of these people in the same room with no AC, no air conditioning, because you're not entitled to have air conditioning if you're committing a crime. Yet these very same people who commit crimes in the U.S., they got a gym, they got AC, they get three meals a day, they have individual cells, they have a library, and they still bitch and complain. Come to Asia with that bullshit and see if you're not going to go back home to the U.S. kissing the white man's ass, talking about thank you, thank you for allowing me to behave the way I do in your country. Asians look out for Asians. Hispanics, I hate using that word by the way because we're not Hispanics, we're indigenous people. Every Spanish speaking native or nation is an indigenous people who were conquered by the Spaniards. Everyone. And so I don't like using the word Latino or Hispanics because they try to categorize all of the Arawaku, which is what I am. The Spanish call us Taino, which is an Arawaku word meaning peace. You have the Mexicans who are Azteca, Mayans. You have Brazilians and South Americans who are Incas. You have the Caribs from the Caribbean. They categorize us all as Hispanics or Latinos. In the end, I'm thankful and I'm grateful that it was America who freed us from the Spaniards because America took over Puerto Rico from the Spanish and Puerto Rico is the only Caribbean island that is the richest of all of the Caribbean islands because we are under the American rule. Anybody who has something ridiculous to say against America, complain, bitch, and moan about slavery, about racism, about inequality, you're all full of shit. You're whiny little bitches, little girls with no balls between your legs who refuse to work, whose agenda is to be woke, to be gay, to be soft, to be sensitive, rather than allowing a man to be a man, a woman to be a woman, a man to do his job, a woman to do her job, and bring the country back to what it used to be when I was growing up. Like Donald Trump says, make America great again. When men were men and boys were boys and girls were girls and women were women. And everybody knew their place. There were more black actors, more black performers, more black entertainers back then than they are today. Is America more racist today than they were 50 years ago, 20, 30 years ago? Yes, it is. And who's more racist, 
the very same people who were entitled, who were, who came from the blacks from the past, who weren't complaining and bitching about racism. Those are the new races today, the blacks. You don't have to like it that I'm saying it. Everybody knows it. They just don't want to say it. It's just like these idiots who want to complain about homelessness in the U.S. and say, and they say, oh, why don't we help the homeless? You know why they don't help the homeless? Because there's no such thing as homelessness in the U.S. You know what there is? A drug problem. 90% of homeless people are addicts. Instead of saying we have a drug problem, the very same woke idiots want to say that we have a homeless problem. The reason why these people are homeless is because they don't want a home. Because if they had a home, they have to pay rent. That means it's less money for them to have drugs. I lived in a homeless shelter for three months. Three months. And for the three months that I was there, I seen men and women get housed. And within two weeks, be right back out on the streets because they would prefer to keep that money for drugs than to be responsible enough to pay bills. Because if they have to pay bills, that means they have less money for drugs. So don't tell me that there's a homeless problem in the U.S. Accept the fact that there's a drug problem and then the homeless problem will be fixed. Get people off drugs and that'll get people off the streets. There are people who are homeless who shouldn't be homeless, but because there's so many fucking addicts on the streets, instead of giving the homes to the people who actually have needed, to the people who need them, there's so many drug addicts who are being housed so that weeks later they find themselves right back on the streets. There's so much of that nonsense that the people who really need it can't get housed. You see the nonsense that's going on in America? It's all bullshit. And if you don't face the problem for what it is, it's never going to get better. America is only going to get worse. This is why people are getting their passports and leaving that country. You can't even buy eggs in the U.S. I remember when eggs were $1.50, $1.79. Then they went up to $5, $6, even $8 a dozen. Over here, you can buy one egg for 10 cents. With $20, I can eat for a whole week, two meals a day for a week, less than $2. Less than $2, I can have a full meal. In some places, in some provinces, you can eat a full meal at McDonald's for less than a dollar. And they call the Philippines a third world country. People here live better than I do in the U.S. I made $1,000 a week back home in the U.S. And I'm retired. I also get a, a paycheck every month. I still couldn't keep up. Here I don't work, I live off of my pension. And I save money all the time. And so, you people back home in the US, you're being deceived, you're being manipulated, you're being controlled, you're being told that America is the greatest country in the world. America is falling apart. There's nothing great about it and we need to go back when America was great. Because I remember a time when it was. I remember a time when people stood together and helped each other. And that's something that happens everywhere else but in America today. And this is why I live in a third world country where people care about each other. Where it's easy for a poor man to make a dime and with that dime, yes, with a dime, buy himself a piece of bread. And with another dime, he can buy himself a cup of coffee. And in the U.S., you got to spend a thousand times that just for a cup of coffee. Five dollars, eight dollars for a cup of coffee when I get the same cup of coffee here for less than a dollar. And you want to bitch and complain about you not being entitled, you not being privileged, you not having what the white man does when I know Puerto Ricans who live better than most white people. I know Indian people who have more than most white people, who go to the country and own a 7-Eleven, buy a convenience store, and do everything that Americans are not even doing. And when I say Americans, I'm talking about us, the Puerto Ricans and the blacks. Because we know that white Americans 
thrive. And it's not because they're white. It's because they have a totally different mentality than we do. Because Asians thrive just as much. And if Asians thrive just as much in America, if people from India thrive just as much, people from the Middle East thrive just as much, in America, it's not a white thing. It's a smart thing. And so, you black Americans, stop bitching and complaining. Do what the Jamaicans do. Do what the Haitians do. Do what the actual Africans do who come from Africa today and go to America and thrive and don't bitch and complain and make it for them and their children. Grow the fuck up, people.